Hi guys! Hey guys! Welcome, Welcome back, back to Violating, Violating Community, Community Guidelines, Guidelines with, with your hosts Brittany Broski and Sarah Shower. And today we're going to be talking about influencer boxing. Yes, one of my favorite <laughs> things. I love violence. I do too, and mm. I love Jake Paul. I love Bryce Hall. I love um, Austin McBroom. Yes. Um, I, and I really just have been waiting for the opportunity to give them a platform because mm -hmm. they don't have one. Yeah, I feel like they're a little bit underrated, yeah. a little bit like not as known of, you yeah. know, that sort of thing. We always like to give men a platform <laughs> yes. on this podcast, so we're going to do that today. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so influencer boxing, everybody kind of knows it. Um, whether you want to or not, we have been forced to know about it. Mm -hmm. So we thought that, I mean, this is going to be such a strange time in internet history to look back on. Yeah. Because we're still kind of, I mean, I would say it's kind of over now, but like living through that and... 2019, 2020, mm -hmm. um, was fucking crazy. Yeah. Like, seeing these YouTubers that, like, I personally grew up watching fight some of the, like, most awarded boxers in the world was yeah. like, so what the fuck's going on in here, do you think? Yeah, it's kind of crazy. And, like, the fact that, I don't want to give the Paul brothers some credit, but the fact that they have gotten so good at it. Yeah. That, like their actual like forces to be reckoned with, which is kind of crazy to me. I mean, I knew that both of them were athletic beforehand, but not to like this extent where you could go toe to toe with like an actual professional boxer. Yeah, it's definitely. Um, yeah, I I don't want to give credit, but yeah, to take it seriously is one. It's like a slay. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. One thing about the Paul brothers. <laughs> they slay. <laughs> People are gonna chop up these like bits. Yeah, they're just gonna cut out like I don't want to give them credit, but the Paul brothers but love that. I yeah. love the Paul brothers. Yes. Maverick, Maverick, Lil Gang, Lil Gang. I'm a Jake Pauler. <laughs> okay. It is so crazy, but I feel like there's something weird happening with uh, Logan Paul, where like he's suddenly becoming like very progressive. Yeah, dude, he rebranded because he was uh, forced to. Yeah, I, I don't think it's genuine. Oh no. To go from like filming dead people in the forest to like being like. So, like kind of like right I hate what's that like meme it's like the worst person you know just made <laughs> just made a really great point <laughs> dude that's the worst when like someone you hate to the, your, their core you like agree with them yeah like fuck yeah yeah well we're gonna talk about some influencer boxing you wanna take it away it's uh you know refers to boxing matches set up between influencers um and other influencers or professional fighters um, some of the most prevalent names in influencer boxing include the Paul Brothers KSI Austin McRoom yeah the Ace family oh Austin Mc the entire family is the, boxing they got the whole family in the ring they're <laughs> boxing each other they like tap the kids in <laughs> And then there's like another like family vlog squad just yeah. like beats the crap out of each other's kids. You I know mean, what? I would not put it past them. You're already taking advantage of your kids. Why yeah. not let them fight? God, what a. We're going to do an episode on yeah. family vlogging soon and then mommy vlogging separately because yeah. they're two separate things. What an insane concept to have your entire life recorded and uploaded from yeah. the moment they brought you home from the hospital. Yeah. You can watch yourself grow up. That's insane. Mm -hmm. There's also like this um, sort of like thing on TikTok where this like mom, like this mom is like critical of mommy bloggers, like vloggers, because like a lot of like mommy bloggers, like vloggers like now they have like Patreons where you can get like extra content of their kids. That's weird. And you're, uh, you know, deep, deep in your soul, even if it's the most innocent content ever <laughs> that no normal person is buying that. Oh, no, what is that? Yeah, and also you can purchase the analytics for a lot of people's like accounts and you can see like a majority of these like children's pages are like like 75% men. <sighs> that is creepy and that's terrifying. That's upsetting. That I just know. upset me. Yeah, and so that's the yeah. It's sad. But let's go back to um, fighting. Uh, Logan Paul <laughs> versus KSI. So this is like one of the first couple matches of like Logan Paul's career. Yeah. Um, I remember this one only because it was the first one and I didn't really like care. Yeah. Past this point. But on August 25th, 2018, influencer Jake Paul fought against influencer Deji in an amateur boxing match at the undercard as the undercard to a fight between Logan Paul and Deji's brothers KSI. Deji lost the fight to Jake Paul in the fifth round. Um, and there's a clip of Jake Paul in pre-fight interviews with Pete Davidson and Jack Harlow saying, I'm about to explode like a nuclear bomb. <laughs> like a nuclear atom. I wish you would. <laughs> oh, nuclear atom. <laughs> I watched this clip and I was like, holy shit. <laughs> also, um, to get Pete Davidson and Jack Carlo to do pre-fight interviews, crazy. I feel like in 2018, that would have been exactly their judge. Not exactly right now. I couldn't imagine like Pete Davidson or 
you know, Jack Harlow willingly, like, talking to the Paul brothers? No, this was, um... This is 2018. 2018 was the first one. This one with Jack Harlow and Pete Davidson was very recent. Oh, really? Yeah. Why was that added on to there? Jack Harlow, Pete Davidson. <laughs> Just said white guys. <laughs> white guys fighting. <laughs> Davidson, Paul brothers. Jake Paul. This was in... Uh, no, that... Oh, yeah, it was in 2021. Yeah, dude. Why were they interviewing him? <laughs> Because they got Pete Davidson to do the fucking pre-fight interviews, and it's the cringiest. It went just as you'd expect it to go. If I, yeah, actually, Pete Davidson, I imagine, would like to watch the Paul brothers get beat up. Yeah. Well, you yeah. want to know what Pete Davidson asked them? What? So, like, what's your favorite color? <laughs> there is a, an interview clip of Jack Harlow and Pete Davidson in Jake Paul's, like, green room or whatever boxers use. I don't know. Yeah. Their dressing room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Asking, like, instead of, you know, how do you feel about the fight? Da, 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 that's when Jake Paul was like, I'm, I feel like a nuclear atom. Yeah. So sick answer, by the way. Sick answer. And then <laughs> Pete Davidson was like, um, so I don't know, like, what's your favorite color? Honestly, like, I feel like that would be a normal question to ask after a fight, just to see if they're coherent. Sure. Hey, you got hit a couple times. What's your favorite color? Yeah. Uh, red? Yeah. <laughs> like, that's just, like, test if they're, like, still, like, you know, conscious no this was just Pete Davidson doesn't know how to host I I mean I don't think that he yeah I think that sounds like him so um, slay how well, men just get things handed to them like that they don't yeah. have to have a morsel of talent no if you're hot and if you're hot it's done dude it's done mm -hmm. so then Logan Paul and KSI's match ended in a technical draw <laughs> he got out crayons at the end <laughs> <laughs> scribbling Who's is better? You can't, you know, you can't say one or the other. No. Um, the fight took place at Manchester Arena in England. Yeah. Is KSI English? Yeah. Oh, shit. I've never heard him speak. I think that, um, well, first of all, I have a fan. If anyone didn't notice that, it's hot as balls A literal in fan. A, a fan. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we did a bunch of research on this topic, and I just kind of wanted to point out I watched, um, what is her name? She is so slay. Casey Onso, mm -hmm. she's a YouTuber. I watched her kind of analysis on this and she just like hit the nail on the head, dude. There is so much that goes into this beyond just, okay, we're training for a fight, we're fighting. And yeah. you know, like that garners millions of views and millions of dollars. All the stuff that went into it beforehand, diss tracks, they mm -hmm. make diss tracks about each other. Um, Twitter rampages that they provoke with each other, awkward press conferences where they're like, you're a pussy. You're yeah. a pussy. All of that, it's fun to believe that that is organic mm -hmm. and that is, uh, you know, for the entertainment and the drama of it all. But what's kind of easier to believe and sucks to believe is that this is all, they probably were on a text thread. You know, yeah. like, all right, I'm going to tweet this. Be sure to quote retweet it with this. You know, it's like all yeah. so perfectly structured and planned out. And I think that takes the fun away from some of it. But like, they're so smart. They saw this as the money grab that it was mm -hmm. and they acted on it and they were the first to do it. And then as we're about to talk about in a second, so many like, averagely toned fuckboys from TikTok and YouTube were like, I can do that. Yeah. And it's nowhere near as successful, nowhere near as, you know, d serious or whatever. And it's just cringe. It's mm. The whole thing's cringe. Yeah. I'd like to say that. But, like, <laughs> again, Logan Paul, first one to do it. Mm -hmm. So, slay, I guess. Yeah, I think it's the type of content, I don't want to say, like, everyone can enjoy. But, like, you don't have to be their fan mm -mm. to, like, watch it. And it's also, it's almost better if you're not their fan. Yeah, I wanted to see them get knocked out. Yeah, you want to see, like, the Paul brothers get punched in the face. So, yeah. like, even people who outright hate them would pay. And that's why Pete Davidson is probably there. Like, <laughs> because you just want to watch them get punched in the face. You don't care if they win or they lose. Yeah. Which is crazy to it's think so about. It's so smart. It's a cash grab. Yeah. That, that's insane. Um... And then they had, like, at one of these, the most recent one, there was, like, Doja Cat performed, mm -hmm. Migos performed in, f in front of Jake Paul walking out. It's yeah. like, these are A-list celebrities. Snoop Dogg was there. And what does that say about, you know, the industry as a whole really mm -hmm. is, like, this is a valid m event. This is something that yeah. sponsors were there for. And, you know, they really thought it was going to make a lot of money. And the first couple ones did. And then as we get into these platform fights yeah. between YouTube and TikTok, it's just like, oh, so no one fucking cares? Got it. Yeah. According to, like, MMA Junkie, Jake was paid $2 million for the fight in 2021. Insane. 
You know, I've always wanted to go abroad. I've only been to Canada, but I kind of want to visit France soon, but I feel like I should know French before I visit France. You know what I mean? For all of your summer travels, whether you're going abroad or staying domestic and want to immerse yourself in the culture, now is the perfect time to start Babbel. Babbel is the language learning app that's sold more than 10 million subscriptions. Thanks to Babbel's addictively fun and easy bite-sized language lessons, there's still time to learn a new language before you reach your destination. I've been taking French with Babbel and it's helped me a lot more than French in high school. Maybe it's because I was resisting learning French in high school because I was forced to take it and now I want to learn French. With Babbel, you only need 10 minutes to complete a lesson, so you can start having real-life conversations in a new language in as little as three weeks. Other language learning apps use AI for their lesson plans, but Babbel lessons were created by over 150 language experts. Their teaching method has been scientifically proven to be effective. With Babbel, you can choose from 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, and German. Plus, Babbel's speech recognition technology helps you to improve your pronunciation and accent. There are so many ways to learn with Babbel. In addition to lessons, you can access podcasts, games, video stories, and even live classes. Plus, it comes with a 20-day money-back guarantee. Start your new language learning journey today with Babbel. Right now, save up to 60% off your subscription when you go to babbel.com slash vcg. That's babbel.com slash vcg for up to 60% off your subscription. Babbel, language for life. I feel like I'm stuck in my boredom. You know, it's like fight, flight, or boredom. And I wish I had like a go-to game that could, you know, move me, like physically move me out of that state. You know what I mean? Because life's too short for a day without fun. Get a thrill when you need it with Slotomania, the world's number one free slots game. You'll have endless excitement at your fingertips with 170 free-to-play slot games, huge jackpots, an interactive community, and a million free coins. It's the perfect escape for your daily routine. What I personally love about Slotomania is the rush I feel with a big jackpot win. You know, it gets me out of my chronic boredom state. Get 1 million free coins when you download Slotomania to kickstart the fun. There's nothing more exhilarating than huge jackpots, special prizes, and free coin rewards every day. Slotomania makes every day fantastic with engaging graphics and realistic sound effects. With added perks like free spins and free coins there's always something unexpected waiting you also get the thrill of slots in the palm of your hand you know you don't have to go to vegas but it's hundreds of original vegas style and video slot machines ready to play whenever you are it's like a vegas vacation without the luggage or the flight or the traveling start having fun right away no insider knowledge or strategies required new features added daily including fun mini games and your very own pet cheetah aurora you also get to join the biggest community of slot lovers in the world interact with fellow players and form cooperative slot clans with new friends or enter electrifying live tournaments become a vip member to get your own personal account manager connect with millions of other fans on the slotomania facebook page the biggest slots community in the world share your wins with the world get love and feedback from other members 24 7. when your day is feeling stale just ask what will today spin if you're 21 or older you can join millions of players around the world download slotomania the number one free slots game on the app store or google play store and get 1 million free coins that's slotomania on the app store or google play store for 1 million free coins um <laughs> would you how much would you accept to fight someone to be punched oh minimum <laughs> probably like 30 bucks no no no, no. probably <laughs> like 50 grand okay if you wanted to punch me very seriously in the face uh, you'd have to give me 50 grand i would six figures for me really yeah dude i'm a puss don't hurt me yeah I mean, I guess, like, I just, like, as long as they don't hit me in, like, the temple or, like, the nose. That'll dislodge something. Yeah, it'll shake everything loose. <laughs> it's just, like, loose jelly beans in my skull. <laughs> Might fix some problems, I, maybe. I say, yeah, I'll, like, Phineas gauge myself, <laughs> but, like, the right way. <laughs> it fixes my frontal lobe. Um, no, but that's so crazy. To get $2 million for um, a fight... Um, so then there's Logan Paul versus KSI rematch on November 9th, 2019. KSI and Logan Paul held a rematch at the Staples Center, according, um, attracting over 12,000 attendees and selling over 200,000 pay-per-view tickets. And KSI won the match. That 200,000 people, well, I mean, I guess, yeah, they have millions of subscribers. Well, and how many of this was, um, uh, what's it called? Pirated. Yeah. Exactly. I watched with my siblings logan paul and floyd mayweather yeah and we were on i had so many tabs open on my laptop and on my phone casting it to the tv off of so many pirated websites and it was like logan paul fight part one part two oh and then like yeah. i got a virus i was like oh fuck we gotta <laughs> because i'm like i'm not paying for this shit yeah they have to know people are going to pirate it because mm-hmm. i don't care yeah. to pay for it to see it in like a high quality. I just wanted to see him get knocked out. Yeah. And then that thing was a whole, no one won. 
I what I can't imagine, what I can't wrap my head around is having so Floyd Mayweather is like a huge fucking like not physically huge, but he's like a huge boxer, like notoriously like tough yeah. and like like strong. I can't imagine in my brain, even if I was decent at boxing. Like, would I go up against fucking Ronda Rousey or something like that? Like, I can't, Im- even if I, like, took boxing classes for the next couple years, I can't imagine having that type of ego. Right, to like, be like, all right, I'll take on the best of the best. Yeah, I would be scared shitless. I, th- so it just kind of speaks to, like, where they are, like, psychologically. Yeah. Like, you are, you are not afraid of anything. Yeah. And I guess that shows in, like, the content that they produce. Yeah, but, like, they truly are not afraid. What? must that feel like i have no idea we were driving the other day and sarah looks at me and goes yeah oh, there's a seven car pile up people people died here yeah we were driving down the road and she was like god suck to die young huh i was like what are you talking it's about it's terrifying you can literally die at like any moment which is crazy to me so I, th- part of that is just the fear of being a woman, I think, too. Yeah. I live in constant fear every day. That is so true. I mean, I have known someone who did get into a fist fight, and the one person got punched, and they died as soon as they got punched. What the fuck? It was Why? just, like, one like perfect shot to, like, their temple, oh and it, like, God. killed them. And that's what scares me about, like, these sort of things. Like, how can you just be so flippant with your life? Well, because this is all, there's technique, and it's not real, like, knocking the shit out of each other it's like it jab is, to the gut jab to the gut but it is real like it is well, real fighting yeah, but you have mouth guards and a helmet and like plushy gloves well they got the whatever oh well i still like you to, know what i mean yeah to willingly do i mean they did make a lot of money so we are going on tour guys if you haven't gotten your tickets <laughs> by the way and now looking at how much money the paul brothers made in this fight i feel like we should fight each other on stage i wouldn't fight you you wouldn't fight me i would lose dude yeah. You would wail on me. I feel like you would just like, I wouldn't have to wail on you. You would just like roll up into a ball. I would take it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. no. Yeah. I'm getting paid to be there. Yeah. I'll so just, it's just take it. It's just a stream to watch Britney get like hit by your roommate. And if you would pay to see that, you're going to prison. Yeah. You're going to jail. That's that's a lot, guys. <laughs> and then they also had, do you want to talk about YouTube versus TikTokers? I do. On June 12th, 2021, the YouTubers versus TikTokers event took place at Hard Rock Stadium in Florida. I remember seeing this promoted. I mean, this was a year ago, mm-hmm. literally a year ago. The event featured a number of YouTubers fighting TikTokers with a title card match between Ace Family's Austin McBroom for the YouTubers and TikToker Bryce Hall isn't for he, the TikTokers. Isn't like um, like Austin like 30-something and Bryce Hall's like 18? Bryce Hall's like... My age, a little younger than me. He's like early twenties. Wait, are do they weigh the same amount? <sighs> I don't know. That's what I wonder. Like, so like in like boxing, in most fights, like there's like weight classes. Like, yeah. does it not matter if you already challenge them? Like, you're just gonna fight them? You know, I don't know because yeah. that was the big pull of this main one. Is Austin was like, you know what? I just don't like him. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's why he wanted to fight Bryce Hall. <laughs> <laughs> Undercard fights included Ann Anison Gibb versus Taylor Holder, Vinny Hacker versus Deji, and Faye Z Jarvis versus Michael Lee. Notably. That is uh, McBroom defeated Hall by technical knockout in the third round. Woo. That but is, also, ugh. That is so fun. So I guess is technical knockout where you just literally knock someone out? Because I know that the whole point of boxing is not to like totally knock someone out. It's to just win the fight so what is technical knockout i'm assuming they just fucking the ending of a fight by the referee on the grounds of one contestant's inability to continue okay yeah so they can't continue is that that a tko i thought a tko was total knockout i i think that's that sounds like a video game term like rko tko tko meaning technical knockout that's what tko means i thought it meant total knockout (laughs) yes holy shit that is so crazy damn he tko'd him that's embarrassing. I know. And the thing is, is like, I, if I'm 30, I don't want to be fighting someone who's 18. But, okay, POV, you're Austin McBroom. Does yeah. that change your mind? I'm absolutely stuck up my own ass. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, he seems like the type to be like, I don't know, like huge fucking ego. Yeah, scary, toxic, masculine man. Again, what is that like to believe that you can take on these people, you know? Yeah, just the world is your oyster. 
that is i've i've never had that i would want like one time well like i started taking like anti-anxiety meds like a while back and so like when i stopped having anxiety i was like this is what everyone should feel like Mm. this is what everyone feels like and so it was like this huge like moment where i was like holy shit so i can only imagine like if i had like a sensory tank or like a perception tank where i could immerse myself in what it's like to perceive the world as a man (laughs) to be austin i would be like oh my god Holy fuck! Yeah, to be a man, like to fully perceive everything yes, as dude. a man, would be cr- a crazy feeling. I think it's this ideological war I would have because I would know the complexities and the beauty of what it is to have a a womanly mind. Yeah, you know, in the way that we process the world. Versus the black and white nature of how most men see yeah. the world and everything is transactional and, you know, all that. And it's just sex motivates you all the time. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know it motivates you as well. Yes. But, you know, like it's very how how less stress. Mm-hmm. Also, the post not clarity that men have. Yeah. I would like it. I, w- I imagine being in the mind of a man is similar to being in the mind of a child. Of a Muppet. So, yes. So I think the closest I can get to is like, because like, you know, like how you feel worse, the smarter you get. Cause you like yeah, realize that. The burden of knowing with yeah. a capital K. So like, you know, you talk about how men have like a very binary way of like viewing the world. It's cause like a lot of the world is like made for them and mm-hmm. validates everything that they do. And so like, I can imagine like what that, like last time I probably felt something very similar to how a man perceives the world is when, right before puberty of where like, I wasn't aware of my body. Like it was just like fun sure. and that sort of thing. And like, it was just, you know, as a child. Uh, yeah, the childlike joy. Yeah, and if I- mis- <laughs> Men have a childlike joy. Yeah, if I messed up, then it's just me being a child. If I mess up now, it's like, you should know better. Like, but you know what I mean? Yeah. That's the closest I could probably think of like what it's like to be a man. I get it, yeah. In, in- Inhibited. Yeah. Uninhibited. Yes. Big yeah. word. That's so crazy. Then there's also Showstar UK versus USA. Um, on March 5th, 2022, the Showstar UK versus USA events took place, pitting influencers from the UK and USA between each other. <laughs> I don't know why. It's just imagining British people fight. Dude. It's prob- No, I'm sorry, guys. Well, they would just have knives. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the uh, American team would just have guns. Mm-hmm, but so. I think since I... Oh, this is so stupid. Since they're accents usually sound so proper to me it's like as if you're getting into a fight with someone like i you like to, like really proper fight What's all this then yeah <laughs> come on then bro <laughs> yes but i know it's probably equally as scary yeah um so the main event saw deji fight alex wasabi and the fight lasted five rounds with deji ultimately defeated by wasabi wasabi <laughs> wait how many rounds are in boxing people are screaming at their screens right now it's just no absolutely zero about boxing it's like dude it, it's like baseball baseball is like nine ten rounds or fucking something like that there are 12 rounds in boxing 12 yeah you could knock me out in one <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you could have me on my ass on the floor in 30 seconds oh wait so each round lasts three minutes for men two uh minutes for women Ugh. we get time to pee <laughs> to be bre- time to change your tampon and breastfeed. <laughs> there's, there's also the iDubs Creator Clash. Creator Clash is an influencer boxing event set up by YouTuber iDubs and his wife Anzia Joma Jomaha. The event taking place in Florida on May 14, 2022, featuring a headlining fight between iDubs and influencer Dr. Mike. Scary fucking name. I know. <laughs> and then there's Gora weighing at 400 pounds. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Dr. Mike. Dr. Mike. He comes out holding a hoagie. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it's just hair and a gold chain. They can't fight because he's not on Blue Cross Blue Shield. <laughs> You have to choose a different primary care physician. <laughs> In this corner, medically unsured, <laughs> uninsured doctor. My, what would your boxing name be? Um, something with shower, because it's easiest. Pig shower! Or like, make it rain, make it shower. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Mine would be skid mark. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, yours would be skid mark and mine would be golden shower. Yeah, skiddies <laughs> yes. and goldie. Gold, yeah. Um, so with undercard fights, what does undercard mean? Not the not the most, like, Logan Paul was the top card, 
Jake Paul was the undercard. So they're not main stage? Yes. Okay, I see. With yeah, undercard- they're at the side stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> With undercard fights, including influencers like Harley from Epic Mealtime, Ego Raptor, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> AB of the H3 podcast, AB! <laughs> Matt Watson from Super Mega, and Dad. Dude. <laughs> Your dad's fighting? <laughs> Dad? <laughs> Tim? Holy shit. <laughs> There, that is so crazy. I mean, this is what I feel like I would want to watch, where these people are not fighters. No. Like, with Jake Paul and Logan Paul have been fighting so long that I would now consider them actual, like, like boxers. You know, like, people who professionally fight. It's, like, similar to how some influencers will start singing, and they become, like, you know, I, this is going to sound sad, the Paul brothers are kind of, like, Ariana Grande to me when it comes from or not Ariana Grande who all came from the internet like um fucking Troy Sivan like Tro- they came from the internet and now that's kind of mainly what they do yeah. whereas like these people I would want to watch them because they're definitely just influencers who are getting into a fight yeah, yeah. yeah. um TBT to when they fought each other online for four years Troy Sivan and Logan Paul <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Logan Paul would lay out Troy Sivan. I don't, in a, not online. I feel like in real life, yeah. No, online, Troy would sick all the gays on Logan Paul. Yeah. And he would be done. Mm -hmm. Which I'm surprised has not happened yet. Mm -hmm. Why is Logan Paul not truly canceled? Again, because he's a man, a white man. Um, God. What was I going to say? Stop. (laughs) Stop. Stop looking at you. Stop. I'm not doing anything. No, you did, because I just forgot. Like how they became actual fighters versus like, because I wouldn't say, I would say I now mainly know of the Paul Brothers for fighting. Mm-hmm. I think that um, very few get to make it past that threshold. Mm-hmm. And the ones that do, it's commendable. Yeah. Because it's not an easy feat, but at the same time, so much of that is a privilege, you know, of being a man and and being like, all right, we're rebranding. And yeah. then you still have an audience. Yeah. It's crazy. But yeah, I think, um, yeah, it's tea. There's a whole other thing where Logan Paul claims to have never been paid by Floyd Mayweather. Mm. Not much else to it. He may or may not have been paid. Um, Logan claims to have moved on and he claims that Mayweather is broke. <laughs> There's an article linked to it. Um, Floyd Mayweather's net worth is $450 million. Holy shit. But it says his salary is $300 million per fight. So he's only had one and a half taxes. Sorry, never mind. Yeah, hey, right. California, am yeah. I right? He's a world-renowned American boxing champion and promoter. He's net, his net worth is $450 million. That makes him the richest boxer of all time. Uh, that's crazy. He's the fifth highest paid athlete of all time and one of just six athletes who co- whose career earnings have topped $1 billion. Who's number one? The other five are Mike Schumacher, $1 billion, Jack Nicklaus, $1.15 billion, Arnold Palmer, $1.35 billion, Tiger... The guy who makes the lemonade? Actually, I would argue that that makes him a fuck ton of money. Uh, Tiger Woods, $1.65 billion, and Michael Jordan, $1.9 billion. Holy shit. Billion. He what's crazy, what's most impressive oh about God, his God. earnings uh stats is that he managed to become the fifth highest paid athlete ever with relatively scant endorsement earnings. Yeah, I haven't seen him do like many endorsements. So he made that just like by himself. That is can't ins- even conceptualize a billion dollars. He earned three hundred million fighting Conor McGregor in twenty seventeen. <gasps> I remember that. I remember that fight. I didn't know the numbers were that big. That is. <laughs> Holy yeah. shit. We are missing out on a prime market. We have to start punching each other. I told you that we have, yeah, we have to start hitting each other. <laughs> 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 but we had to film it. We do. Uh, we start a Patreon and we just have lives, right? Like we slap uh, off each other. Have you seen the Russian <laughs> slap yes, fights? Yes. Uh, I feel like that's more than boxing. Yeah. Boxing, I would just get annoyed. Mm-hmm. If I'm constantly like this and I'm, oh, my kidney, my rib, my rib, my rib. That's annoying, dude. And while I'm down here trying to protect my ribs, you're getting my my face. I'm just going to get annoyed. Yeah. And maybe I will start wailing back at you. Yeah. Slap fights, I'm deaf. I feel like, but those are, what I would hate about slap fighting is it's so disrespectful. It is. At and least, they put chalk on their hand too. Yeah. They get up in there. That's just like, as someone socializes as a woman, I, I don't want to do that. I'd rather get punched in the face than slapped in the face. Yeah. Yeah. Because there, there's something about slapping that is just so disrespectful. <laughs> just hate it. <laughs> just start slap boxing. God. But you can only slap areas that aren't the face. Just get him really hard on the arms. Yeah. 
<laughs> like, you know, like how gymnasts have like chalk and they just like rub it all over them, yeah. their bodies. That's like outside my room every like day. I like come over. Brittany, come here. We have to live stream. I come out just plastered in <laughs> <and> chalk. <laughs> God. So there's a conspiracy that Jake Paul pays off his competitors to ensure a win. Uh, did you write T? I did write T. Okay. Because yeah. it is. Because there's this whole thing of he fought somebody and he was down in the first round. Like, yeah. oh, oh, I can't get up. And then after the show, he was like frolicking around. Yeah. And people were like, no, 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 no. Like, Jake must have paid him to like ensure. That he was fake. And there's all this slow-mo footage of Jake like, whoa, <laughs> spit coming out of his mouth guard. And it's like, you know, they put that in slow motion for like a trailer for his boxing with like a future song over it. Yeah. It's like, top 10 greatest boxing moments of this year. <laughs> it's like, that is probably what happened. Yeah. I refuse to believe, maybe I'm just a hater, mm-hmm. that he like won. Well, I'm looking at like some like different websites uh Apparently, he believes that some people like believe that the YouTubers' qualities are as good um, as like professional boxing figures. I would say I kind of maybe because like there are some influencers who can genuinely sing, but that's not like what they're known for. Like you, like you, I was listening to you sing last night through the walls. Um, <laughs> Sorry, and you had like you were like in whistle tones <gasps> the entire time, and I was like, Brittany is literally known for like farting and being a personality. I do do that, but the thing is, is you have such a, like a voice that is like professional singer quality. Thanks. So I think that the Paul brothers, in this sense, like their professional quality is. Boxing. It could be another thing in their arsenal. Yeah. I could agree with it. And it's not like they haven't put in the time yeah. and effort. I mean, they're big, big boys. Mm-hmm. And they were originally were athletes, like similar to how like you did musical theater and you sang growing up. Like you honed that skill before you were ever famous. Yeah. A little true. Just a matter of like directing it. But um, so the Battle of the Platforms payment drama. Let's yeah. Hear so about this, that. this was more tea. So Battle of the Platforms, a first-of-its-kind boxing event featuring YouTubers and TikTokers with a headline fight between Austin and Bryce Hall, reportedly lost at least $10 million. How did they lose $10 million? Yeah. <sighs> um, Billboard reports that the event cost $20 million to produce, but it's only brought in between $6.5 million and $10 million in revenue. Oh. Accordingly, investors, including NBA star James Harden, he's hot, Producers and 15 boxers have yet to be compensated. Bryce Hall, for his part, was promised $5 million to participate in the fight. $5 million? Just to participate, not even to win. That's what I'm saying. Like, you get paid to show up, regardless yeah. of the outcome. Both Hall and McBroom predicted that the event would generate between $1.7 million and $2.3 million pay-per-view packages on LiveX Live, which is where the event aired. With packages priced at $50 each, that would have accounted for $85 million to $115 million in revenue. But the event only sold 135,000 packages per billboard, generating revenues of 6.75 million. It's unclear how much money was brought in via sponsorships. What I don't think, I think this makes sense because if you think about both these people, Bryce Hall's audience, majority young women, and I don't think a majority young women like to watch fights. And then you think about Austin McBroom's audience, majority family vloggers. So they uh, they probably do have like a decent amount of like male followers, but for the most part that's not even their primary audience. No, and it's also like this doesn't have the same appeal for a hate watch the way that a Logan Paul fight. Yeah. Did. Especially the way the internet felt about Logan Paul at that time. Yeah. You know like this for people who don't know who he is by the way. Yeah. Wake up sheeple. But at the same time, he is notorious online for um being outrageous yeah historically and shock content and just being disrespectful and so for this to um kind of come together the way that it did it was like yeah i want to see logan paul get like the shit beat out of him yeah i don't think that these two people have that same pull yeah like people hate bryce hall people hate austin mcbroom for whatever reason Mm -hmm. um and there's a lot of reasons but it's also like you guys just aren't popular enough you're not famous enough 
Yeah, I mean, I think they are famous, but like, yeah, the hate for the Paul brothers is like to your core. Yeah, because it's like you actual disrespect with Bryce Hall. Like he's just like annoying. It's like you're a he's a fuck boy. Yeah, like and you that's like a passive sort of hate where like I would just block them and move on. Yeah. Like I would pay to watch Logan Paul get punched in the face, right. though. That's the thing. And also fifty dollars each. If a majority of your audience is also like young women, they're not going to pay fifty dollars to watch a fight. Yeah, what on their parents' credit card to yeah. watch you bite fight someone in Florida? No, and then that's not gonna happen. Family channels, like family, this, you know, that's not we like families are not gonna watch fifty dollars to like yeah. watch your favorite like family vlog man get like the shit beat out of him. There, that's also a crazy thing. It's this delusion, the delusion you were talking about yeah. earlier of like to be f- fearless. Yeah, Austin McBroom was a thirst uh, trap poster yeah. on Vine. I followed him on Vine. This is before anything went down. Yeah. Then I was like, no, he's kind of cringe. Vine went away. I forgot he existed. I was also 15 at the time. YouTube comes around. He has this wife, I guess, that yeah. he hates. <laughs> yeah. As most uh, married men do. And they start this channel. He completely rebrands as this, I'm a dad and we bought our house and we're yeah. renovating and da da da. I don't think you can have that personality want to be likable and be seen as this family man while at the same time posing as this like, I don't give a fuck, like Bryce Hall, what's good, like all that. You can't be both of those things concurrently. Mm -hmm. You know, be this like fuck boy, athlete, I'll beat your ass any day. You have a daughter. Mm -hmm. You have a daughter. Yeah. And I also think like if we think about like collab culture, like where we talk about like if we were to film a video with someone, it would have to, the audience would want to see someone that it would make sense that we're filming together. Like you share the same sense of humor. Not only are these cross platforms, they're like not even in the same like a demographic or age group so like it's an you wouldn't there's not even any sort of animosity at least with the ksi and like logan paul they're both like the same type of like creator on the same platform where like you the it makes sense to pit them against each other it truly doesn't make sense to pit these people against each other because their audiences are so vastly different and they come from different platforms so you're you're like what's the beef here right like realistically why would they hate each other yeah there's no history there there's no reason for us to care i think it's just like that is all of these reasons are why this failed yeah why this is cringe Mm -hmm. and embarrassing and a flop now i'm scared they're gonna watch this and want to fight us Hit, no, well, I mean, hit Sarah. Hit Sarah. No, no, no. <laughs> let me stream it. Let me stream it. No, but I mean, I don't think I don't. It, again, it wouldn't make sense for me to fight Bryce Hall um, or this guy. Like, they, I wouldn't fight anyone. Yeah, I, I wouldn't fight anyone except me. The, uh, yeah, I'm trying to. The event only sold, but it says it only sold um, 135,000 packages per billboard, uh, generating revenues of 6.75 million. It's unclear how much money was brought in via sponsorships. That's it's still a decent amount, one hundred and thirty five thousand. Yeah, but they're in the red. Yeah. Uh, Billboard notes that DJ Khaled and Lil Baby, who provided musical entertainment, appear to have been paid in full. (laughs) Stanley said (laughs) this is a note from Stanley. Common Lil Baby W. There's no reason for Lil Baby to be humble as he puts it in their face. He literally won't feed in the drama because he is loving the hate. Because one thing is for sure is that Lil Baby goes crazy. His four pockets are full. Thanks, Stanley. Thank you. Because little baby goes crazy. <laughs> Accordingly, McBroom has threatened legal action against Live X uh, Live and called for an uh, audit of the event's numbers. He also claims that Live X Live failed to clamp down on piracy of the stream, enabling hundreds of thousands of viewers to tune in on YouTube for free. Yeah, dude, you think a bunch of like angry young teenage boys aren't pirating the shit out of this? Yeah, uh, the uh, your audience that would pay for this is probably stealing it. Literally. Honestly. Um, others- on top of that, too, it's like, I feel like people don't put enough faith in young girls on the internet either. Yeah. I was coding Tumblr pages, like, at the ripe age of 14. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, And especially this newer generation, where they've been doing this since their <laughs> early youth. Yeah. There are ways, if you want to watch something, you can figure out how to watch it. Yeah. Like, to think, to predict that many people are going to pay to watch you, be realistic, dude. Mm-hmm. Like, we're all children of the internet at this point. Like, we're going to figure it out. And it's That's just them being over, yeah. a- overly ambitious with those estimates. Mm-hmm. Um, others involved with the event, however, claim McBroom is at fault for approving an untenable budget and yeah. improperly marketing the event. Yup. 
Yep. The fight over your attention, colon, influencer boxing. This This is is an opinion piece from Inflow Network. Mm -hmm. So all of this is coming from that. All right. So these days, influencers from every corner of the Internet are always involved in some kind of drama. That is very true. um, And we love to watch them throw down. It's all natural, really. Drama is a part of our daily existence. Yeah. You like tea channels. I do. So do you. Mm-hmm, I do. Uh, but when drama between people gets broadcast is glo- broadcasted globally, it becomes a story. Some choose to tell the story while others are forced to do so. When KSI and Logan Paul fought in 2018, everyone thought they were forced. They were angry. They had to duke it out. But what if they were not actors in the story? What if they were the storytellers? <gasps> yeah, I mean, Jeez. the thing is, is it does kind of drive me up the wall when people say influencers are stupid. Like, I understand... Like, it, influencers are a lot smarter than you think they are, even if, like, they're goofballs, like us. Like, we are generally, like, stupid sometimes, but we do have, like, a team and, like, basic common knowledge, and that's why you keep it going. If we were really stupid, we'd be in prison for tax evasion. Yeah, exactly. But the thing is, is to be successfully influencing, you have to be, like, smart. So, like, even if these guys are idiots, they are smart. Yeah. You know, like they know. Or at least business savvy. Yeah. <clears throat> to a certain extent. And 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 they understand how the internet works. Mm-hmm. And when, when you've reached that level of you've been on the internet for long enough, you know what people fall victim to. Uh-huh. You know, clickbait, fucking diss tracks. Yeah. Um, fabricated beef. You've got, you have the world in your hands. Mm-hmm. You know, and at that point it's just like. What do you want to do with it? Yeah. And I think it's so funny that this is what they choose to do with it. I, honestly, I think fighting is a great choice because, like, again, it's a lot of people want to see, uh, like, people fight. Like, they like pitting people against each other. But also you would like to see the people that you hate get hit in the face. Right. Which is, like. Perfect storm. Yeah. It's the perfect storm of, like, content. Yeah. And you don't. It's the only real skill is just, like, pure aggression. Right. Is what you have to have. I think also how much of this, because this piece is literally called The Fight Over Your Attention, Influencer Boxing. Yeah. How much of this is just their egos running wild? Yeah, it's like peacocking. It is. It it, it literally is just flaunting it because you have all the money you could ever need, Mm -hmm. all the internet fame you could ever need. And so it's like, what what is missing in your life? Or is it just this insatiable desire to make it bigger and bigger and bigger? Yeah. Because you know, Logan Paul was making, I'm sure, tens of millions of dollars from YouTube. Yeah. On now all the different revenue streams that he has. So it's like, of course, this is a money grab, but it's also just to show, look at me. Yeah. You know, I think it's so crazy. Mm-hmm. This is such an interesting thing. Yeah. I think it's like how, as a content creator, if you want longevity, you have to be adaptable. You have to like change it up. And I think, I mean, that only like that not only includes like spreading to different platforms, but like this is a different type of like content. Like boxing is like so. I think it shows that he's adaptable. Absolutely. Yeah, and that's he's gonna be around for a lot longer, which kind of sucks. But yeah, we're gonna get into um, crocheting. Yes. And book TikTok. (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. That's what's next for us, guys. I was going to get into boxing and hit Britney while she's crocheting. <laughs> live. <on laughs> live X Live. The live leak of, like, logo appears. <laughs> it's just, like, an overhead shot of your room. And then, like, you're, like, knitting on your bed. You don't even notice that I walk in with, like, a golf club. <laughs> <laughs> live leak. <laughs> Oh. So it says, punch that bag, get that bag. In the wake of the fight, it was clear that a new avenue for revenue was invented. Hold on, if you were to if hit I was, me. I would never. No, I, hypothetically. If you were to hit me, what would you use a golf club? What would your weapon of choice be? The thing is, is what uh, if I could hit you with my hands, but that would seem so personal. That would. Like if I, if it, like slapping you would just be like, I don't know, it would be so rude. Yeah. Punching, I'd have to close my eyes and punch you. I, I get that. A slap would be like, what did I do? Yeah. But if you were to come in with just like a weapon. Yeah. It's well, one of those big inflatable like Flintstones yeah. bats. And it makes the thunk. Uh, <laughs> well, I was. Oh, wait, wait. So this is I was watching this like um, self-defense instructor. This goes into like a whole another different type of topics. But I was watching this like guy who was like a self-defense instructor. He's like, if you ladies want to defend yourself, you've 
a lot of people can't get over the hump of like hitting someone. Mm. So you have to think of your attacker as, as an it. As an it. Yeah. So oh, they're that's... no longer like a human being. And I was like, okay, that also makes sense for why a lot of men are physically abusive is because yeah. they view you as an it. Already. Yeah. yeah so hey, like step one, check. <laughs> yes. So like if you're defending yourself and you want to go all in, you need to like take someone's human hood from them like their yeah. humanness and just think of them as like an object an assailant and that's when you can really like claw out their eyes yeah. but so the thing is is like i would never be able to think of you just as an it or something to be hit you know right <laughs> right the, i would the, hope so i think the only time i would ever hit you full force is if you got like rabies or like you're tripping or, or you're attacking me you'd wail on me if i was tripping well, if you were attacking me and you were tripping. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm your trip sitter and I'm just beating the fuck out of you. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, Brittany, clear your mind. And I start slapping you. <laughs> Where's the money? <laughs> They're coming. <laughs> There's worms in the walls. Nightmare, nightmare, nightmare. Wake up. <laughs> <laughs> just like the worst trip ever <laughs> no you'd have to be i'd have to be defending myself but yeah um so in the wake of a fight it was very clear of a new avenue of revenue was invented the attention of the business savvy was drawn out to the premise um emotional reasons physical consequences and all on an it's ethical hard. basis yeah this is like the ethical way to watch people beat the shit out of each other yeah because normally like if two like influencers have beef and you go live and they see each other on the street like that's unethical to like start fighting each other it's like well it's also like i would rather see y'all actually throw some punches than whatever that shit was we should do an episode on this um instagram dual instagram live fighting yeah where it was like yo pull up pull up no you're a pussy bro you're put pull up no fight me then fight me then no what's up like that for 45 minutes straight Uh uh-huh and it's like usually over a girl who's in the background of one of the lives just like stop yeah and like that is so fucking weird i would rather pay to see someone than that just imagine like ancient greece like helen of troy like stop guys so they're on like instagram live just like (laughs) <laughs> that is so crazy and so as you'd expect you wouldn't be the last uh the last time influencers took to the ring uh various companies were established organize and promote fights and the events were set to give uh set to get even more impressive with other fights had happened including a second fight between logan and ksi the effects of investment from the business side were felt only after the recent match between logan paul and the boxing legend floyd mayweather where the, sh- uh, where the shift was made clear, influencer boxing is now mainstream. Yeah, I would agree. When it's with the right people. Yeah, I mean, like, Floyd Mayweather is, like, the Mil- Michael Phelps of, like, boxing. Like, imagine if I got so good at swimming, I was in the same pool as Michael Phelps. And you called him out via a YouTube video diss track. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be something I would pay to see. That is actually so crazy to think about it like that. Like, who are the... That'd be, like, if I was so good at basketball, I went, like, toe-to-toe with, like, Michael Jordan. Yeah. Like, this is one of the best fighters the in the greats. world. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just, I'm playing basketball with Michael Jordan. <laughs> Immediately break my ankles. That's my roommate. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Back to slap boxing. <laughs> Watching you die on national television <laughs> on a like, basketball match. I'm in an Olympic pool trying to do the breaststroke. <laughs> I sink to the bottom of the pool. <laughs> that Charlie Horse always did get her. <laughs> Um, you want to talk about how it went? Yeah, so this is when it went cross-platform, this whole concept. As with every trend today, the TikTok community also managed to get involved with the YouTube growth trend. The TikTok versus YouTube showdown Battle of the Platforms was held just a couple of weeks ago. This mm-hmm. is out of date. <laughs> so this is Austin McBrew versus Bryce Hall. Yeah, Austin was in the news recently around this time following controversial stories about his personal life. This is when he was like cheating on his wife and lying about his house renovation. I watched all the tea videos on Mm -hmm. this. He is a fucking insane person. Currently the fight aligned or curiously, the fight aligned perfectly with Austin's controversy, leading to some calling him out on social media for trying to distract from his story. Austin, meanwhile, recently chose to respond to the allegations with a single tweet, which I'm sure was fabricated and, you know, with maybe Bryce Hall's team. Like, none of this is real. Mm -hmm. As influencers scour for new and innovative promotion opportunities, possibilities are fast multiplying. Influencer boxing has surely won such innovation and a master stroke in marketing. It's set to be a trend that'll be a mainstay in the sphere for the foreseeable future. Mm -hmm. 
Um, okay, now I kind of want to get into some analysis of all this because yeah. we've kind of talked about it to a certain extent of, you know, is this just an ego trip? Is this just toxic masculinity in the form of aggression mm -hmm. just on the world stage? Um, and we're, it's our morbid curiosity that we want to watch it. Like, yeah. is that what it is? Or is it, can it be um, grouped in the, into the same category as kind of what's happening with film? And uh, this is a, an opinion segment from the article from uh, boxing.com. Mm -hmm. It's called The Role Social Media Plays in the Boxing World. And basically in this, he alludes, the, the author alludes to Martin Scorsese back in 2019 saying something to the effect of, Franchise-based, studio-driven superhero movies are like theme park rides. Mm -hmm. um, and that's to highlight in basic terms how studios have pivoted towards safe, easy-to-digest, guaranteed money makers rather than, the place, rather than place their trust and money in the hands of the authors and storytellers of old. It was a comment made by Scorsese with no small degree of sadness, yet an equal degree of acceptance, felled no doubt by an, aware an awareness of how our lives have changed. He says, there are some in the business with absolute indifference to the very question of art and an attitude toward the history of cinema that is both dismissive and proprietary, a lethal combination. The situation, sadly, is that we now have two separate fields. And this is where I'm getting back into boxing. Mm -hmm. There's worldwide audiovisual entertainment and then there's cinema. They still overlap from time to time, but that's becomingly in becoming increasingly rare. And I fear that the financial dominance of one is being used to marginalize and even belittle the existence of the other. Mm -hmm. So in boxing, a similar trend has emerged and consequently a similar allowance has to be made. So real fights, just like real films, you know, indie, what they're commonly being referred to now as like small indie films, mm -hmm. will still be around. And, you know, they'll still have their loyal fan base. But by and large, what's taking the world by storm mm -hmm. are these cheap money grab fabricated, you know, Marvel movies or, and mm -hmm. I love Marvel by the way. Yeah. But it's these things that like globally people are going to watch because mm -hmm. it's so easy. It's so like monkey brain, mind numbing. What is this? I have to see it. Yeah. I think this has been going on forever. It's just like, yeah. it's, it's affecting like his business, but like, I mean, yeah, I've taken like screenwriting classes and they talk about like all the time, like if a movie is successful, they're going to make a sequel, especially. Yeah. And so like, you know, Marvel movies, you want it's you want to watch it. They're going to make sequels of it. It's going to be on, like phase seven now or something stupid like that. Like yeah. all these different building on building on building on movies from mm -hmm. 20 years ago. It's just it'll never stop until yeah. someone puts a stop to it. Yeah, I feel like that is. Not to cut you off, but like the social media, yeah, social media is allowing that to happen with not just boxing, but so many other things. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, like, it's like also like porn and art. You know, yeah. like porn is a huge money maker, but art is like so. It's like very hard to like th draw the line between like porn and art. So yeah, I mean, like cinema and then just like these, you know, cash grabs. It happens to every single industry where like if you can make a fuck ton of money, they're gonna go for the easy sure. thing sure. each time. Yeah, it's just easier. Um, so, but yeah, in other words, real fights, like real films, were sh uh, will surely always exist in one form or the other. But to ensure the long-term health of the sport, we must accept the theme park fights and theme park fighters. Yeah, um, the people. I mean, that's like like actors who can't act and they only play themselves. Like they only yeah. play one type yeah. of characters. I consider Mark those. Goldberg. I'm thinking like, um, what's that? What's that lady from Friends? Jennifer Aniston. Jennifer An I is just Jennifer Aniston. Yeah, every movie. Like it, like some actors, like when I see them, they just transform. Yeah. I think Jennifer Aniston physically must cannot put on an accent. Yeah, she's playing Jennifer Aniston in every single movie. She's yeah, casting. that's yeah. definitely like so. Yeah, um, but uh, they still over. Yeah, um, in boxing, whatever. Where did I lose? Like leave this off. Do you know what is interesting to me is there's so many. I see so many TikToks and studies and duh about this, but the f Vine rule mm -hmm. of like our attention span is six seconds, sometimes less. Yeah. TikTok maybe lengthen that a little bit, 15 seconds. Yeah. When we reduce being entertained or something keeping our attention down to that long, personally, it's affected me. I never really had issues with 
my attention span in high school or, you know, even college. College, I started to because social media started to become more of a monolith in my life. Mm -hmm. But, like, I never really struggled with it up until that point. Now, my attention span is virtually non-existent. Yeah. I mean, I give a TikTok maybe five seconds before I'm, like, boring. Yeah. You know, and it's like, how much education or knowledge or media, helpful media, am I missing out on when I do that? And I think about it a lot of I, – I want to be entertained so much that I don't even know what that means anymore. Yeah. You know, and, and the ability for us to go deep and to really sit with a topic and marinate in it and study it and, and focus on it is leaving. Mm-hmm. And it leaves us all kind of a little stupider and numb and – Because it takes too much time and effort to go deep into something. And I feel like this is kind of hitting on that, the audiovisual entertainment Mm -hmm. versus, you know, boxing fans who love boxing. And, like, that's they they talk about it with their buddies and all that. It's like, it's just, this is something that you just scroll past. Yeah. I worry about that Mm -hmm. because the more social media becomes this, you know, global dominant thing that it is... It sucks because you don't really get to go deep into too many things anymore because there's just so much content. I also, th- well, I think that social media like make can make you stupid, yeah. But I also think that social media is not purely like entertainment is not purely like haha, like funny sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. Where like you can have like educational content that is brief that captures your attention. You do learn something. I think like we're I don't think as a society we are getting stupider. I think that we're just getting more aware of like everyone else around us. Mm. Because like the way that news traveled like in the past, like you get like one to two newspapers every single day. Sure. And so like you don't know about like the inner workings of like certain marginalized groups unless they literally did a piece on it or sure. you talk to them in person. Now, I mean like with social media like I know about like native Hawaiians and like stuff I would have never, never even have guessed because it would have to been like a very hyper specific question that, that I would have asked them. And sure, I'm digesting it in like 30 second increments. But now I'm becoming more aware of so much. Sure. And I think where it becomes daunting is that like since we become aware of so much, we realize how little we know about like things. But like a, back in the day, they just weren't aware of diddly shit yeah. and so like they were like we have they have now a fuller knowledge of the things that they do know because they're not even aware of the rest of the world sure you know and i think that that's kind of similar to how like um you like want to put out like new content like every day but then you watch all the other content that people are putting out and you're like i'm so far behind there's just so much like i could be saying it's like no like it's yeah there's there's so much but it doesn't mean it's like all good right you right. know yeah so keep your head down yes i don't yeah. think people are getting stupider I think we're just now aware of how stupid people are. Maybe that's it. Yeah. Yeah. And it just feels like there's so much more, because there is, information available, like you said. And that becomes overwhelming. And so instead of having a super in-depth knowledge of, you know, a few topics, it's like, maybe I'm speaking personally, I have a surface level knowledge of a bunch of stuff. Yeah. That's not even useful because I don't know that much about any of the yeah. You know, but it's, it, it is that. It's like, is it awareness? Are you sacrificing an in-depth understanding for an awareness mm-hmm. of multiple issues? But anyway. Well, what's that? Uh, the full phrase is, a jack of all trades is a master of none, but oftentimes yeah. better than a master of one. Hey. It's better to, like, uh, honestly, it's pro- in my opinion, it's better to know a lot, like a little about a lot, than like a lot about just one thing. Yeah. Because that means Cannibal cookbooks. Yeah. You're, you're not like adaptable, like in certain situations. Very true. Like, sure, you may be a great mechanic, but like social skills don't know that. Yeah. You know, I'd rather know how to like change my oil and like talk to Brittany and like a normal. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I'd rather be moderately good at some things. Yeah. I get that for sure. And I think it's um, just very interesting to see how things evolve within the entertainment industry. Yeah. Where. Again, I feel stupid and sometimes like a chess piece in this big game until I wake myself up where I realize that there are people in boardrooms and meeting rooms being like, all right, human attention span is six seconds. Yeah. We know that, you know, this is trending right now. People are loving this. Da-da-da. All right, let's get to work on a show that's like that. And yeah. it's like, we're going to eat it up. Yeah. Because it is being fed directly to us 
by the people that have observed us. Mm -hmm. So it's just, I don't know, I feel like a cog in a machine (laughs) sometimes. I don't even know what I'm ranting about. Yeah. Me neither, but yeah. I agree. Thank you so much. Uh huh. So the same, you know, back to this opinion piece. The same goes for remakes, which in boxing terms translates as show worn fighters. The thing is, is like I feel like WWE is like the actual like theater version yes. of boxing. Yes. Where I think that that is more comparable to like the Marvel <laughs> yeah. cinematic universe. I agree. I think that this guy personally just has a problem with like influencers. Go- uh, well, the thing is, okay, this is me just a bias. I've always said this. People in traditional media fucking hate yes. people in social media from social media. Because they don't get it. So even if the, like, I'm going to take the, like, I think this guy's opinion is legit, Martin Scorsese. Um, <laughs> but like, I think there's, ask literally and if you have access. Anyone in traditional media thinks that social media is so shameful, like to come from it, that like, you do you know what I mean? So I think that yeah. that is seriously affecting this guy's opinion as well. Yeah. Like if you have, I'm like I can search like several articles right now from people who are boxing legends that do admit that Jake Paul and Logan Paul are legit boxers. Sure. But like if you hate social media people, you're never going to see their talent. Sure. Exactly. Well, because you inherently view it as a negative thing. Yeah. So that'll influence how you see anyone who comes from it. Like yeah, said. like comedy, like professional, like traditional comedians absolutely hate social media comedians oh, dude. because they feel like they didn't earn their place there and it's like no there's just now a different avenue yeah you know you don't have to scrub the floors yeah to be able to get it on the main stage or born into a certain family right yeah people the world get is changing mm-hmm. um, a societal change as much as a boxing change these factors have credited the perfect storm for the internet celebrity uh, for internet celebrity like jake paul someone whose audience and popularity eclipse most professional boxers and whose ability to pro- promote himself is maybe unmatched in the sport um, bigger than boxing and perhaps the only way that presently matters the divisive american fought three times last year beating aging beating aging mixed martial artists Ben Askren and Tyron Woodley twice, and if he hasn't already, we'll soon have most pros begging for an opportunity to fight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he's, f- like, yeah, if he fought, like, actual pros, even if he was, like, I don't think he's paying these people, honestly. I don't know, because the Ben one, I saw clips, and I was like, he's a little too agile after being TKO'd. Maybe. But regardless, I mean, he is, if, if these opponents are saying yeah you gotta hand it to him yeah you know okay slay yeah and these are still like boxing legends you don't even if you were paid like a little bit to like go easy on someone you wouldn't want to make yourself look stupid right because it's still your reputation on the line yeah you get the shit beaten out of you by a paul brother that's embarrassing even if you did allow it a little bit sure yeah if you got paid behind the scenes yeah for in the end while celebrity and freak show fights have long been boxing's dirty secret Never have they seemed as potentially key to the health of the industry as they seem right now. Reminded at every turn, it's a numbers business. It's now all you tend to hear when one is either mooted or takes place. Pay-per-view buys, gate receipts, followers, the numbers repeated by promoters and TV bosses are used to provide evidence, silent cynics, and sometimes even show the good these fights are supposedly doing for the industry. The argument being that more eyes on the sport can only be a positive thing. But why do large numbers and cursory glances mean for boxing, real boxing, if the quality control gets slacker and slacker and genuine boxers are ignored and forgotten as a result? Now that's tea. Mm -hmm. If all of the prime time goes to these internet people, I get the frustration for real boxing fans, which by the way, that's a whole other discussion of like, you guys just like watching people beat the fuck out of each other? Yeah. What kind of weird (laughs) man dominated community is that? Mm -hmm. Um, Furthermore, what does it say about the true health of boxing if novelty fights are considered not just welcome, but relevant to its long-term success? Mm-hmm. And then Stanley kind of gives gives us his opinion here. He says, interesting take, but comes off a little surface level and out of touch. I think there's a more nuanced way of describing this topic and the potential problems that arise, rather than just kicking the sand about how social media stars are boxing and stealing the spotlight. Yeah, that's what we were saying. Like, a lot of this hate just comes from, like, social media people. Yeah. Like, if... It's crazy how I can't even explain how much they hate people from social media Mm -hmm. because they view it as unfair. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, But again, also what you have to realize is like even if these are novelty fights, they're bringing their actual audience who like they've earned for themselves. Right. You know, like that there's these aren't just like 
these they've earned these audiences and they're just bringing it to a different platform and what the audience now has like a discrepancy mm -hmm. like this is like the boxing audience versus like this person's audience like they still earn that by themselves yeah just through like a channel that you don't approve of yeah mm -hmm. it's a crazy crazy thing and i think what's gonna kind of tip the scales in the near future is i mean we know these influencers turned boxers yeah but what about these boxers that in order to stay relevant, you have to have a social media presence. Yeah. So these boxers turned influencers. Yeah, and I that's crazy to me too. Yeah, and I, th I think like as soon as like boxers like start to like really focus on content, they're gonna realize like how difficult it is. Yeah. Like as much as I don't want to give the Paul brother Paul brothers credit to amass such a following and be good to add two things genuinely is and like is a fucking skill. You know, like if these boxers, like they're they have this skill, but if they also were to become like big social media influencers, and the thing is, is I doubt that literally the Paul brothers are going to be like Floyd Mayweather got like a YouTube channel. That's not fair. He's bringing over his boxing right. audience. They would never no say that. No fucking way. Yeah. it's because they're scared. It's uh, the traditional. The people in traditional media are so scared of social media. Yes, because yeah. this is the wild west. Yeah, it's uncharted waters that they have no idea how to navigate. Yeah, they know how to navigate traditional media, and yeah. it's like. It's feeling threatened, mm -hmm. it's feeling scared, and it's feeling like, you know, well, your career is at risk. Multiple players can be in the... This is not a zero-sum game. Exactly. Yeah. Like, it's not a competition the way that you think it is. Yeah. It's a competition when you're in the ring. Uh-huh. You're fist fighting. But yeah. I, I tried to look into, like, some of the, like, why men actually fight, like, psychologically. <laughs> and I, like, came up with some, like, different articles, um... There was this one guy from The Guardian who, like, wrote this piece in, like, 2017 where he was, like, I'm not the I'm not the type of guy to fight, but I got in this, like, road rage incident. And, um, you know, I was I'm a liberal. I was raised by, like, artists. And I don't know why I got this, like, twinge of, like, adrenaline in me to fight. And I was, like, you're seriously not taking into consideration how society influences you. If, like, I mean, I could have been raised and, like, my mom didn't have any body issues. My mom didn't, like, body shame me, like, that sort of thing. And But I still could have body issues from, like, outside sources, like, media and stuff like yeah. that. So for this man to, at the end of the article, be like, I don't know why I felt this, like, need to fight this guy. You weren't raised in a bubble, dude. Yeah, you're socialized. And this is also something I wanted to talk about, which I thought was super cool. So there was this group of monkeys. Um, <laughs> I need to read this to you. So basically, there was this baboon troop. Um, I I'm going to read it to you. The baboon troop that mellowed out after the alpha males died. Okay, so basically, biologists Robert uh, Sapolsky and Lisa Scher have followed a troop of wild baboons in Kenya for over 20 years, starting in 1978. Uh, they called them the garbage dump troop because they got much of their food from a garbage pit in a tourist lodge. But not every baboon was allowed to eat from the pit in the early 1980s. The aggressive, high-status males in the troop refused to allow lower-status males or any females to eat the garbage. Between 1983 and 1986, infected meat from the dump led to the deaths of 40 six percent of the adult males in the troop the biggest and meanest males died off as in other baboon troops studied before they died these top-ranking males routinely bit bullied and chased males of similar and lower status and occasionally directed their aggression at females but when the top-ranking males died off in the mid-1980s aggression by the new top baboons dropped dramatically mm. with most aggression occurring between baboons of similar rank and little of it directed towards lower status males and none at all directed to females uh, troop members also spent a large percentage of the time grooming sat closer together than in the past and um Hormone samples indicated that the lowest status males experienced less stress than underlings in other baboon troops. Most interestingly, these effects persisted at least through the 1990s, where after all the original kinder males had died off. Not only that, when adolescent males who grew up in the um, other troops joined the garbage dump troop, they too engaged in less aggressive behavior. So yeah, they found out that like it is like like a society influencing you mm. when all the aggressive guys died off literally all the males that were left became less stressed out more peaceful they started to like groom each other and they weren't like beating the shit out of each other they started to wear pearls and yeah their nails. <laughs> yes, and wearing maid outfits but yeah. that's so crazy that like you don't realize how alpha male society society is yeah that's what's insane to me and it poses the question of how do we eliminate the Andrew Tates of the world mm -hmm. without using a gun? God, I, I don't know. I think it's so, um, it, it's a little inspiring 
yeah. to think that this is taught behavior. Uh-huh. You know, like it's it's less scary to think that, well, this is just how men are. Yeah. It's their instinct. It's in their blood. Some of that may be true, you know, like the fucking caveman, yeah. me hunt, me gather, me fight. Like, I get it. There is some scientific evidence to support that. But at the same time, it can be unlearned. Mm-hmm. And it is aggravated by the media that men are fed. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I, I think I don't want to victimize men, but like so much of it, too, is the way they're raised. Yeah. Is, well, you know, go, f- you got to fight for what you want. And mm-hmm. this is, oh, you, you fucked her and da, da, da. it's like yeah. that is taught and rewarded behavior mm-hmm. that can be not taught yeah and a new better generation of men will come about mm-hmm. hopefully i don't know but then it's also like it separates like what your family teaches you like so you can be like the best parents but also like again you can't shield your children from society mm-hmm. we're like you think about like propaganda like or the marvel movies where like a lot a majority of the movies deal with fighting for a woman right physically fighting for someone and I, you can imagine like what that would do to like a child you know you're gonna think i have to fight for this woman or like the born series or like the taken series like a lot of these like manly men blockbusters are about fighting for someone mm-hmm. so like you can teach your sons that you don't need to fight but then also it's still going to be so prevalent in society because it makes money, which really fucking sucks. Yeah. Honest to God, it fucking sucks. It's classic nature versus nurture. Mm-hmm. Is some of it, it's always going to be a little bit of both. Yeah. So, I don't know. If you, if you guys have sons out there, just be cognizant what you're showing and feeding them. Oh, dude. I was uh, watching this, like, TikTok thread of where, like, this girl realized that, like, her uh, younger brother was getting into Andrew Tate. And uh, all the comments were like, oh, yeah, my nephew has started to like. And I'm like, oh, my fucking God. It's a new generation of I know. nasty, like, alpha, wannabe alpha males. Yeah. I just don't. It's so scary because, well, this is a whole other topic. Yeah. But. By making fun of him, yeah. you know, and like having him on podcast episodes and giving him that platform, he is going to steamroll everything you're saying. He is not interested in being converted to the other side. Yeah. Hassan Piker had him on his show and uh-huh. like was constantly just like, here's why you're wrong. Here's why you're wrong. Here's why you're wrong. Andrew Tate didn't fucking care. He didn't listen. Yeah. He used Hassan's platform to spread his message. Yeah. That is why these young. Oh, it's just so. Mm-hmm. It's like it's all fun and games and jokes to us because we know. Yeah. My God, this dude's a fucking idiot. But so much of that is like by bringing him on and making fun of him, you're also spreading his message to the people that are are listening. Yeah. You know, they're young and they're listening. There's this term that I want to do a full podcast episode on. It's called irony poisoning. Yes. Um, So like a lot of so you know how we say we could joke about like misogynistic things like women don't deserve rights. But eventually like a lot this irony poisoning happens to a lot of like men and young women Mm. where you joke ironically about something enough that you actually start to believe it. Yeah. Or like it. Yeah. And so like if you see someone joking ironically about like edgy stuff m- more often than not give them about six months and they will develop that belief like there are literally studies where Scary. like people can joke about like piss kinks long enough to develop a piss kink <sighs> and that's honestly manifestation it's like wishing something into existence it's like saying i'm going to become a doctor one day and you say it every day for six months and then you believe you know i'm going to become a doctor so you take all the steps if you are i your brain cannot distinguish between like what you believe in what you like within these sort of like jokes eventually mm. like they're going to accept your jokes as like fact mm. and that's what's crazy so you can joke about Andrew Tate's long enough where you're like I know that this is ironic but the people around you and like there's a lot of people who don't have context for who you are they're going to take that as fact and the belief that you believe that yeah which is which really fucking sucks you have to say outright that you think he's a misogynist and a weirdo and dangerous yeah yeah it's uh, such a weird thing too because online all what's the term for it um where they do slash Serious. Oh, tone indicators? Kidding. Tone indicators. Before that was introduced, I mean, it's like, how do you know? Yeah. And that's the biggest thing on Twitter is people don't know when people are joking or not. Yeah. Like, you're being ironic. You're being sarcastic. You're being serious. You know, it's like people just don't know. Mm-hmm. And so they jump at you or they take you at your face value. And so it's like, <laughs> that assists too. Yeah. It's just so scary how it's mm-hmm. lost in translation over the internet. Yeah, there's no context online. Yes. So, like, even, okay, and so this is where, like, girls, especially, you could tweet, 
the most ironic thing. But let, all context is erased and all they see is a woman saying something stupid. Yes. So like other women and people who are smart could recognize that you are making a joke. But like more times than anything, everyone's going to go for the easy punch, quote retweet it and make sure make you feel ashamed yes. for even saying this. And you're going to get tired of being like, dude, this was a joke. So like you, if you're going to be ironic, which sucks, you have to it has to be abundantly clear yeah. that like you are being ironic. Which really fucking does suck. I think it's time to bring back LMAO JK. Yes. <laughs> hey, that accomplishes it. Mm-hmm. It's seven simple characters. Yeah. Um, all right, guys. This has been Violating Community, community Guidelines. Oh, well, I was going to say, this has been talking about influencer boxing and that why too. boys fight. And I have been holding back diarrhea for the last 25 minutes. I do have to pee. Yeah. Let me sit on your lap and then you just open your legs. All right, so we're going to go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Loving you guys. All right. Thanks for listening. Also, we're going on tour. If, Come see us on tour. Mm-hmm, if I feel like tickets may be almost sold out by the time this goes out. But yeah, you better go. You better get your tickets now. Come on. All right. All right. Love you guys. Bye.